Hey everyone, Ilda here from My Love Doing All Things Crafty and welcome back to another process video on my YouTube channel. Today I have another fun interactive card to share with you featuring this flying piggy that comes from Honeybee Stamps latest release and this stamp set is called Pinky the Pig. So here I'm just selecting the stamps that I'm going to be using to create this card and I'm inking them up with the blackout ink from Ink on 3. This ink works great with alcohol markers and water-based colored markers. For this card I'm using Canson watercolor paper and to color my images in I'm using the Tombow dual brush pens. To color my images in typically I just add um, color to the outline edges uh, leaving a white space on the center where the highlights would be and then when those areas are dried I will go back and layer more color on top adding shadows and highlights wherever I feel um, the image needs it. So for now I'll let you listen to some music as I color the rest of these images in. Now that the images are all colored in, I'm just going to use the coordinating dies from Pinky the Pig to die cut everything out. So now I'm going to work on my background. Here I've got the cloud stencil from the outdoor scene builder stencil set and I'm going to be blending out a rainbow cloud background using only three Distress Oxide inks. So I began by using Squeezed Lemon for my first cloud and blended that out. For the second cloud I used Squeezed Lemon again and added Peacock Feathers and blended those two colors together. For this third cloud that I just did, um, the stencil was a little bit wet so it gave it a little bit more intensity and that was the Peacock Feathers. For this um, purple uh, layered cloud I used Pick Raspberry and Peacock Feathers and this gave me this purple color and then I finished off with Picked Raspberry again. So here's the part that I think most of you will be interested in. How did I create the mechanism to make this piggy fly? Using a T-ruler I measured down about 2 inches from the top of the card just behind where the piggy will sit. I'm using the scrap piece of paper to create my pull handle and I'm just marking out its width on the paper. Using a pen blade I'm just going to cut a slit so that the slider mechanism can go through. As you can see I have a difficult time pushing the paper through so I'm going to create or make the slit a little bit wider.
All right, so here's where you have to pay attention. But first I need to give credit where credit is due. I did not come up with this on my own. I did watch a wonderful YouTube video from another card maker and YouTube artist. Her name is Laura Davalo, and she makes the most wonderful interactive cards. So make sure you check out the link above. So here I'm drawing some dots on the pull tab that I will be poking holes through. I'm also adding a couple of dots to each wing, one that will attach to the pull tab and the other one will attach to the card base. So you want to make sure you leave enough space between the first and the second dot so that it will allow for movement when you pull on the pull tab. So as you can see, I'm just using a piercing tool to poke a hole through each dot that I have drawn. And then I'm going to take a silhouette pick me up tool and use the pokey end to go in each hole and widen them. Now I'm cutting a piece of clear sewing thread. You could use fishing line, but I think the fishing line may be a little bit too thick to tie a knot in. So that's why I selected this clear um, sewing thread. So here I've threaded or fished the line through the two holes on the pull tab. And now I'm just gonna take each wing and thread through um, the first hole of the wing and loosely tie a knot to keep these wings together. Now I'm lining up the inside dots of the wings with the marks on the pull tab. I then use the outside hole to draw a dot on each side of the pull tab. And now I'm gonna pierce the panel using the same technique as I did earlier with the piercing tool and then the pick me up tool to widen the holes. Now using some very small brads, you're gonna take each brad and line them up with the second hole all the way through the panel. Here I'm using some scissors to leave enough gap between the piece of paper and uh, the brad teeth so that there is enough um, space to allow for movement. Now for these wings to work properly, all you have to do is tighten up the strings. So at this point, I thought I was almost done and was going to be able to put the card together. But I realized that these wings were on upside down. So I took them all apart, re-threaded some clear thread and just reassembled the card again. I'll let you watch this process again, just in case you missed something the first time. Now that I have tested out the wings and know that they will work, I'm just going to tie some extra knots in the line. So now it's time to hide the mechanics behind the little piggy. I'm trimming the pull tab just so that I can leave an area so I can put some foam tape to attach the piggy to. You want to make sure you leave enough space between the piggy and the wings so that there is no interference when the wings are flapping back and forth. 
To do that, I'm just using some foam tape, um, but if you find there's still some catch on the piggy, you may want to use doubled up foam tape. So here I was feeling a little bit lazy and I didn't want to go looking through my stash for an arrow, so I just drew one in with a Sharpie pen. Before you attach the card panel to the card base, you're going to want to add some foam tape to make sure that this mechanism will work properly. You'll want to make sure that the foam tape around the pull tab is nice and straight and then that you leave enough space around the brad so that it doesn't interfere with the movement of the card. To ensure that the string doesn't come apart, I'm just adding a little bit of multi-medium glue to the knot. Yay, I'm so happy that this little piggy can fly now. For my sentiment, I decided to go with Hog Heaven for you as it reminds me of a piggy in heaven with all its little treats. And I'm just gonna stamp it out using some white ink and heat emboss it with some white um, embossing powder. And just for fun and to add a little more detail to um, the card, I'm adding some very pale pink confetti from the bubblegum confetti mix from the newest Honeybee stamp release. And now I'm just adding some Winka Stella to add some sparkle and shine to a few of the pieces on the little piggy. And I'm making sure to take off the ink as it does pick up um, the watercolor ink from what's on the paper. And for some reason, a card isn't finished until I add some glossy accents. So I have to add some accents here and there to make this card a little extra shiny. So now all that's left to do is to stamp out the inside greeting for my card. I'm using the Ham It Up stamp set again and I'm going to stamp out Go Hog Wild, It's Your Birthday. This is one of the five cards I created for Honeybee Stamps Spring Release Blog Hop. So make sure you check out the links below to get you started on the hop as Honeybee Stamps will be giving away two $50 gift certificates plus four winners will win a Be Organized prize pack. All you have to do is leave a comment on each of the blogs. For more inspiration using these products, make sure you stop by the Honeybee Stamps blog. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below, as I always love to hear your thoughts on my creations. Thank you for watching, and until next time everyone, happy crafting! Bye!